All right, let's look at the <clears throat> second half of our World War II topic. The central question, how did World War II change Europe and democracy forever? Um, the Nazis used a new tactic called Blitzkrieg, uh, which enabled them to move very quickly with their army and air force through a country to uh, overwhelm them and then uh, take over the country. A uh, new form of warfare, army and air force, which moves very fast to avoid trenches. Poland falls in one month. Uh, they didn't have a very formidable um, uh, defensive uh, army, so uh, they fell very quickly. Sitzkrieg, or the Phony War, from the fall of 1939 until the spring of 1940. Germany just kind of sat on uh, Poland. Uh, nobody knew if they were going to move to the west and try to take over France, uh, and this, that is why it was called the Phony War. All right, <clears throat> in April, Germany invades Denmark and Norway. In May, and this is in 1940, in May, Germany invades Belgium and Luxembourg. Then in June, Germany invades France. Um, Dunkirk uh, was, a, uh, was a location on the, um, that separated the English Channel um, from Britain. And uh, at Dunkirk, there were thousands of soldiers that needed to be, uh, Allied soldiers that needed to be evacuated back to England. Uh, Vichy France was created with Petain ruling. Uh, the tripartite pact in 1940 was created between Japan, Germany, and then Italy. So uh, after this took place, France fell fairly quickly, uh, and uh, the Nazis ruled almost all of Europe. The Battle of Britain, the German Air Force of the Luftwaffe, led by Goring, uh, to bomb England and to destroy the RAF of the Royal Air Force. Uh, and this was uh, a very trying time for the British. Uh, Germany wanted to take out the British Air Force so they could then invade England. They felt that if they could uh, destroy the Air Force and they didn't have any backing, then they could la launch a sea attack uh, across the English Channel and then take over all of uh, Europe. Um, Germany uh, invades the Soviet Union June 1941. Uh, Hitler um, had planned to invade the USSR all along. USSR employs the Scorched Earth program, where as they were retreating, as the Nazis were moving forward, uh, they just burned everything so the Nazis wouldn't have any supplies. Germany soon finds itself overextended, and they've moved too quickly, too fast into uh, Russia, and uh, they're finding that they're, uh, such as gasoline, ammunition lines, are stretched too thin. Uh, and Pearl Harbor takes place. Pearl Harbor is when Japan bombs Pearl Harbor in December 1941. Hitler declares war on the United States December 11th, shortly thereafter. Uh, Hitler did not uh, want the Japanese to attack the United States. They wanted the United States to stay out of the war as long as they possibly could. Uh, the Grand Alliance between Britain, USSR, and USA took place in 1942. Now, the Nazi Empire was the largest at the end of, uh, it was the largest um, at the end of World War II, no, that's just, should say, it was the largest at the end of 1941. Uh, Nazi New Order exploited Europe, the Slavs, Poles, Jews, seen as subhuman. Uh, this leads to the Holocaust, genocide of Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witness, political prisoners. The Wannsee Conference in 1942 was a plan to kill all European Jews, uh, and, and eventually six million Jews were killed, uh, and then six million others. But they actually had a conference right outside of Berlin. You know, it was like a country club, and they just all got together uh, at the conference. They laid out the plans, uh, crematoriums, gas chambers, uh, where they're going to put all of these locations, how they could be the most efficient to kill as many people as possible. Uh, some of the turning points in the war, Aleman, uh, November 1942 to 43, German troops were driven out of North Africa uh, by the British and American forces. Uh, Stalingrad, November 42 to uh, 43, was a turning point in the war in the east. Uh, the Soviets then started pushing the Germans back all the way into uh, Germany. D-Day was Operation Overlord, took place on June 6, 1944. 120,000 troops uh, crossed the English Channel to invade Normandy and France. A Western Front is then set up because you had the uh, Russians fighting from the east. Now you've got the British, the French, the Americans fighting from the West. The Battle of the Bulge took place in December 1944, Hitler's last offensive against the Allies. It failed, uh, and once it did fail, the Allies really started to push right into Germany. On May 8, 1945, 
uh, Germany surrenders. Uh, <clears throat> number six up here, the end of the war in Japan uh, took place when we dropped the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and then Nagasaki, uh, and that took place in August 1945. Now, post-World War II, talking about you know, what came out of it, um, actually in 1943, um, they had the Tehran Conference. Uh, the big three, meaning Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin, uh, all meet together. Stalin tries to take uh, Eastern Europe or says that that's what he wants to control as a communist country. He's going to control those. At the Yalta Conference in 45, the big three meets again. Stalin actually agrees to free elections uh, and they set up the United Nations meetings. Germany to be divided into four zones. Uh, the Potsdam Conference, Stalin reverses his stance on Eastern Europe, and that's when we really see the spread of communism. Some of the results from World War II, 55 million people dead, 22 million of them from uh, USSR. We had the Holocaust, millions left homeless. Uh, there was an increase in women's rights due to the, the fact that women were starting to work a lot more and fight in the army in some cases. But this left left us with two big players, uh, the United States and USSR, uh, which then would eventually lead to the Cold War. All right, history's no mystery.